So this is one of my favorite pictures I've ever shot in my life. But I love this guy with the 7-Eleven coffee cup chewing on his nails. This girl was just, she was sad and tired and just, she's on her phone. And, and the other lady to the left is just, just kind of lost. And, and I don't know, it's New York, it's strangers, it's the camera, it's whatever I was doing in my life at the time. And it's, when I pull this picture up, I'm just like, that is my favorite picture I've ever taken in my life. Now, it's noisy and it's, it ain't a phase one. You want to talk about pixel peeping at 100% crops? Well, I want to see 100% crop of that. Well, it's going to look like garbage because, you know, I'm moving at slow shutter speed. It's ISO gabillion. But then I think back to my days of film. If I shot ISO 800, I was lucky. You know how lucky we are to shoot ISO 1600 so easily? It's so easy. So I'm walking around the streets of New York, and I walk out of this store, and there's this girl on her phone. And I go, oh, I kind of like that. It's like this black wall and girl in a white dress, and that's, that's kind of cool. Click. I take this picture, and she's on her phone. I turn around. I take the picture. I turn around, and there's this other girl on her phone. Click. And I turn back around from there, and then there's some dude on his phone. And it's like a movie moment where the, the camera pulls back and suddenly reveals I'm surrounded by 100 people on their phones. <laughs> I'm like, oh, everyone's on their phone, huh? So I, like, I'm walking down the block, and I'm going, ah, you know, down the next few blocks, I'm going to take pictures of people on their phone. So I take pictures of people on their phone, and I start this thing. And then I thought, well, I'm going I'm to just, I'm going to work on this today. Today, I'm only going to shoot people on their phones. Just give myself an assignment and, and just do this kind of thing. So I'm walking around the streets of New York. And then the next day, I get up. I really enjoyed going around finding people. And how close could I get to you? You're on your phone. How close could I get? How much could I be in your personal space and take your picture and you not know because you're so oblivious to Twitter or whatever you're talking about? So I start this project, and then the next day, then I go home and I start looking at, for it there, and suddenly it's everywhere. I'm, I walk into the stairwell, this guy's walking down, he doesn't even know I stepped into it, he just goes right past me, he's on his phone, and I look down and I see this like awesome composition. I go, ooh, awesome composition, sucks without a person. Wait, I'll wait for homeboy on the phone. And so I just sit there and wait, and he stays on that phone all the way down the stairs, and I just wait and brisson that baby and click. <laughs> all right? So I'm excited about this. Now, keep in mind, I'm a commercial photographer, an editorial photographer. You hire me to shoot portraits in a studio on location. You never hire me to, to, to make money shooting street photography. This is not a money-making thing. This isn't a thing that that like, oh, I'm gonna go be a street photographer as a job. Very few people do that. So this is just personal work. What I love about this is you've got uh, a girl all the way on the left on her phone, girl kind of sort of in the middle talking on her phone, and the other side, the right side, someone's on her phone, and then if you look inside the reflection, someone's on their iPad. Device, 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 device. We could be in a room full of people. <laughs> I never talk to a soul. And it started making me think, like, what is so important about this? Well, I started getting excited about this project. I'm excited about this project. I'm excited about shooting on the streets. I'm excited about this. Oh, I got to go shoot this guy and for a magazine. OK, I'm excited to get a paycheck. And then I'm excited to go back out on the streets and shoot. Just, you know, on a skateboard. <laughs> Texting. Two. <laughs> what is so dang important? You've got to have an iPad and a phone going all at once. Like, it's, you know, you can switch between apps, lady. Right? <laughs> and this is interesting. This is one of the very few pictures I have of someone on their phone and they're smiling. <laughs> Most people are bored, lonely, or upset. Nine times out of ten. I take a picture of someone, they're bored, they're lonely, or they're upset. Very rarely do I get a picture of someone who is um, happy. 
Like, look at this guy. <laughs> now, what's funny, this picture right here, I'm hanging over that railing. See that railing he's leaning up against? Well, I'm hanging over it, and this girl had stopped on the stairs, and she's texting him like, and I take her picture, and then I go, you know, one person in the picture on the phone is boring. I really need to start getting two people in this picture on the phone. So it should just be about five seconds. So I'm sitting there, and sure enough, here comes a guy on the crackberry. Click, click, click. Great, got that. And I pull back up, and the guy's like, this, this guy is like, hey, what you doing? Oh, well, I'm doing this project. I have to explain this whole project to him. Oh, okay. So he's like, well, I'll see you later, blah, blah, blah. I walk about 10 feet. I turn around. He gets on his phone, and he's... And I walk right back to him. I get about three feet away from him. I take the picture. I put my camera down, and I stand there. And he's, he looks. You just shot my picture, didn't you? You're in the project. See ya. <laughs> All right. One, two. Look how happy he is. All right, now he's on an old school device. <laughs> Getting photographed, There's, it's still, it's in, it's everywhere, right? <laughs> Excuse me, sir, your dog's pooping on the sidewalk. Oh, uh, hold on, I'm updating Facebook. <laughs> You're in Times Square. Look around you. Oh, I'm on the phone. Hey, guys, I'm in Times Square right now. It's really awesome. <laughs> right? So, I'm shooting these pictures. Trying to get to the next slide. Trying to speed this up a bit. You get the idea. I'm a bad editor. Any photo editors in the room are like, oh my god, we got the idea 10, 100 slides ago. All right. Ah, yeah. I love this one. This, this next one kind of sums it all up. <laughs> he is so happy. He's just happy as can be. So I shoot this project, and I'm excited about it. When I'm excited about it, I want to share it. Well, my clients aren't need street photographers, but I want to share this. So I start sharing it with the world via my Twitter and Instagram, and I start talking to people about it. And remember, it's born out of this stupid camera. Sorry, so um, great camera, right? Because of this little camera, because how excited I am about this camera, I'm, I'm looking for pictures to make, where I would have never, ever, ever, ever made it before. And it ended up that CNN picked it up. Oh. <clears throat> yeah. And for, for that day that it was on, um, it became their most Facebook-liked story on CNN. And then they ran it on air. And by the end of the afternoon, other news networks started calling the studio going, hey, we've seen your device thing. We'd like to interview you. Do you have time? Could we you know, have you on this show? Could we you know, bring you to Chicago and talk to you about this? Could da, 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 da. And suddenly, these other opportunities start popping up. Because of a little personal project I started to do, started to share it, got excited about it, had a little something that I could, make ha I could make it happen with this camera, all right? So I got paid. CNN paid me. Oh, damn, cool. Not the price of the camera or whatever, you know. <laughs> but then I get an email. Now, I did a blog post about this camera. I never do gear reviews on my site, very rarely. Like, I can think of maybe half a dozen gear reviews in the last five years I've done on my blog. And I did an extensive one on this camera. And I was very honest about it, because there are certain parts of this camera that suck. Sorry, so, uh, you know, there are things like it's a, oh, I say words in my head I should not say. Um, it doesn't focus when I want it to. It doesn't do this thing. And why does manual focus take 14 million revolutions of the lens? <laughs> it frustrates me, but it, I love it. It has a soul. It is the first camera I've ever had that I feel has a personality. And I declared on my blog, I said, I'm going to get this out of the way. This is the greatest digital camera ever, ever made. Ever. And everyone was like, yeah. 
Well, the autofocus isn't response. Whatever. You know? My phase one that cost me $25,000, is it responsive? Well, the noise, the 32, I, I, 400% you know, magnification, I could see a pixel where it shouldn't be. <laughs> well, it doesn't compare to my D3S. Oh, oh yeah, I'm sorry that the $1,200 camera doesn't compare with your $6,000 camera, fool, with your $2,000 lens bolted onto the front of it. Yeah, you know, my Volkswagen doesn't compare to your Maserati, you know? <laughs> But I'll take my Volkswagen, thanks, because when someone opens their door on your car, <laughs> right? 